Karen and Karen and two. Recording is on. <laughs> yeah. So no. The, yeah. So the the question was, well, like, what what happened to the left, really? But the left got too into their own identity, so they they fell foul more to the big program of the twentieth century, and that was to fragment us and atomize us, and it. In, in a lot of ways, it worked better on the left because uh, they, everybody was fragmented into, uh, into their different identities. And, um, and so they basically got too stuck in their own narrative um, that was uh, too domesticated and too positive, you know, basically too hopeful and uh, too insular. So that, so that uh, you know, the left is extremely tribal now. So they, they, yeah, they look at the homogeneity of the right. The, the right is quite a homogeneous block. <laughs> I think that the left, unit. the left is where it is because it's constituted a lot of people that are much more beaten down than the people from the right. And the people from the right sometimes can af could afford to, um, <clears throat> I was going to say, think outside the box and start to be, more, you know, there's, there's a social yeah. divide too that we can't ignore it. Like we know what education. Yeah does and from what i know and from what i see the the people around me who are uh, in the left uh, there's, there's a lot of them who didn't really even have the time to be able to to educate themselves into these matters and the people on the right mm -hmm. have got the luxury to have had a background and education that can give them that so i wouldn't really investigate the left i would just say that they have they've been sleeping and that they need to mm -hmm. educate themselves basically that's that's what i think yeah no know. they've been asleep yeah they've been asleep yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, to, to, to wake up, you can wake up very quickly. You just basically say, well, it's kind of tall order now that I think about it. But <laughs> conceptually, you can wake up pretty quick by just, um, you know, getting a nap and getting, it, it's fun. Just think of it like a learning experience, just like Roger Hallam was doing with old style, archaic, has been passe street protests, which are fucking need to be put on the rubbish pile of history. That's basically, it's the, it's a street protests of were never much use until you got a pitchfork and really did some damage. But, but the left needs to get over that mindset and just let the past go and say, you know, that all that shit is passe. And so now there's a learning experience, a whole new, way of uh, protesting and stuff and just start get and get an app um go on the street corner and say i'm i'm raising money uh for uh to put on the well, the stock market to to bring down the economy to save the planet and see if see if the the blue head rinse crowd <laughs> has an interesting conversation because they won't talk about climate change but if you talk about i'm going to wipe out your pension they might want to have a tell to you <laughs> outside asda they might go um um what do you mean wipe out my pension and say that's what we're going to do this week old madam say so you little baby boomers have had your time and we're going to fuck you in your old age tell them that and you say why you say because of the arctic basically we, we're on the last stretch granny and you fucked us. Now we're going to fuck you. So give us 20 bucks and uh, I'm off to the stock market to do you in. And there's an interesting conversation. They'll, they'll talk about climate change pretty soon after that. <laughs> <laughs> says, I'm going to yeah, put up a big sign. I'm going to Wall Street to wipe out your pension. Talk me out of it. <laughs> But that's <laughs> they're gonna beat you with umbrellas and handbags but that's good too they need to learn to start beating people with handbags and that's good too yeah yeah there's nothing bad about it nothing bad people need to be radical so you just have to it's it's really getting them out of their complacency so you don't have to really get too you know bent out of shape about what comes next or where we take them to or what we're trying to convince them is nothing. Just, just bump them out of the rut. Doesn't matter which direction, doesn't matter what, you know, if you, if you wake up grandma and she turns into Mussolini's, that's eh, okay. <laughs> you can take it. <laughs> as long as she doesn't carry on being grandma and saying, well, we must vote responsibly and have a greed new deal. <laughs> so you've got to get that narrative to end. <laughs>
Protest to the sure, government. I think the government they... has all the power. It's like, oh, they don't. Wall Street has all the power, and we're going to try to take them down this week. <laughs> Hugh, I, I get the impression from reading some of the things, uh, financial commentary that that's that you put up and that others have uh, put up, that most of the people who are involved in this at the moment are, are not looking beyond. Uh, they're not looking beyond their their little world and they think this is a great game that we're going to damage these hedge funds and uh, you know kick a few big wigs and or, or big operators and all the rest of it uh, and they seem to be oblivious to the fact that you can't do that in a vacuum without affecting the, the, the rest of the world um, because it's you know everybody's absolutely dependent on the money system um, and so there's this kind of a disconnect that they're playing a game and and getting completely, you know, absorbed in it and carried away in it. And I don't think they realise the real, ultimate real world consequence that they're actually involved in something a, a lot bigger than they think they are. Uh, think uh, think yes, yeah, so some people must realise. I, I highly doubt that <laughs> they're not people that realise what's going on. But few. For that, but you're that, back where I, I, what I was thinking, just to sort of bring the conversation back even vaguely to do with the caged chimp, is that you know if you do realise that, um, you're you're back in that situation where the caged chimp is going to set itself out of the free to find that there's nothing out there for it. That it's 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 you know you might get out of Auschwitz, but it's a scorched earth everywhere, um, and you know again and again I find that what's left out of every single narrative is is the fact that the the inevitable death of very large numbers of people, um, which comes about regardless whether you do nothing or whether you do everything, it still occurs. Um, so that's an unavoidable thing that, that has got to be at least known. Um, uh, you know, I'm just sort of, because, because that particular inconvenient thing is left out of the, the conversation, it, it, it affects everything else. Like even what you were talking about a few minutes ago about Sophie was talking about the, 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 master tradesmen or, or you know whatever they're roaming the country and all these alternative ways of of living which are going to be seriously um uh compromised by masses of dead rotting bodies for a start you know there's there's yeah. like it's not as if we we bring this system down and then miraculously we're all in little groups helping each other with what's left um, I don't know. You okay, got thought on that? Um, okay, you you forced me into <laughs> difficult territory, as you know you normally do, to the benefit of everybody. Um, okay, so let's be honest. Uh, if if they pulled this off and the derivatives markets uh, melted down, a lot of people would die. Now. There are a couple of things to say about this. First of all, is not as many as you think and not the people that you think. So the way where you see, this is why it's good that these kids don't know what they're doing. They need to play with matches in this with, you know, around the dynamite, even though they don't know what dynamite is and they just don't have a clue how much dynamite there is to go off. It's important that they play around with the dynamite and, take matches into the into the magazine. The reason is that if the whole thing blows and the economy stops dead, for, we have this narrative of privileged liberals that we think, oh, what about the brown people and all this stuff? Because we've been told by Oxfam that they're poor brown people. What Oxfam doesn't tell you is, we're the fucking problem for the brown people. <laughs> it's our economy and all that shit. Oxfam doesn't tell you that because they're raising money. 
they want money they're capitalists so basically they don't tell you that basically if you want instant relief for the brown people if you really really don't want to be racist fucking end this fucking industrial system now the first thing that happens in india and africa and south america and these poorer places they get relief instant relief they will be laughing the day it happens now that's we don't understand that as sport liberals because that doesn't fit with we think everybody wants to be us and so we're being a great act of kindness you know giving them our cancer because we can't imagine that like these guys are cancer free and cancer isn't wonderful and so so we export our cancer thinking we're being kind and oxfam is being brutal to africa because we're exporting our cancer but you can't tell that to a liberal that thinks, well, I haven't got cancer. It's like, you are cancer. You're a walking virus. As a liberal Westerner, you're a walking planet gobbling virus. So the first thing that happens is this is getting the virus to attack itself. So basically, well, luckily, we're well into the video. And hopefully, all the lightweights are already ducked out already. But if you've lasted this long into the video, then basically, the first thing to say is, the people that go down with this are not the ones you think. The real villains go down with this. People with white skins, people who live in urban societies, people with carbon footprints about as big as a fucking SUV. Those are the ones that go down. Those are the ones that suffer. Those are the ones that are going to sh be shooting themselves. What happens in all of this is if you're in the Kalahari or in like the, the jungles of South America, the first thing that happens is... Now, if you're a Puroha person, fucking a trader stops coming up the river with COVID. That's the first net benefit you get as soon as the global economy goes down. Then. They, they, the reason why the guys in the, you know, the Machiganga and all these guys in the tribes, basically our last best hope to survive as a species, those guys are they getting these diseases like COVID and they've been really ravaged by COVID is because guys are coming up the river to get Brazil nuts to put in your fucking latte at Starbucks. Now, as soon as Starbucks goes bust, that trade will end. It's in essence, a kind of a slave trade. And so basically all these guys who you see, if there are millions of acres all through Africa that have been planted already with rice for the 2021 season, that rice is destined for Beijing, Shanghai, basically Wuhan. They're getting that fucking rice. Soon as the fucking trade stops and all the tankers are furlough and bloody thing, and they can't find any oil to run the fucking things, and they can't find an economy or market to sell the rice in, guess what? Africans have rice. <laughs> they have tons of rice in Mombasa. <laughs> so. We have it all upside down, but you don't want to say all of this to people. I mean, if, how much of a good sell do you think it would be to say to, you know, these kids on Wall Street bets, say, hey, I know, why don't you go and toast the economic system? And that'll be great for brown people. They'll be like, um, actually, I was doing this because I wanted to pay off my college debt. <laughs> so basically, it's, it's good that the guys are so short-sighted, but in, in general, Bloody hell, those revolution stories. Yeah, there's a big lightning behind you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a, like, I'm getting close to <laughs> but, but so, yeah, but so in general, in revolutions, that's what happens. It's, it's you know, when they make all the movies of all the Bolsheviks uh, getting stormed and the, basically all these guys attacking the gates of the, um, you know, the Winter Palace and stuff, when they make all those movies, all the extras running around apparently have a degree in fucking Marxist communism. And they all, <laughs> it was like, no, if you've ever seen one of these things, basically 90% of the people running with the herd are just there for the freaking fun. They're just thinking, hey, I wonder if I can get anything out of the palace. It's just they have the basis motives burn to man. You know, when I was in South Africa, I almost got tire burned a number of times. And one of them was almost by a bunch of seven-year-olds. I'm talking like millions. <laughs> like a lot of the, the, the riots that went on in Soweto were, were little kids. I mean, seriously little kids, six and seven. And, um, yeah, I had a very interesting time once. I had a very interesting reason to go to Soweto, but white people didn't go to Soweto. It was every moment I was there, basically, my life had been challenged. And I saw them in the, in the riots. 
And one one of the interesting things was I saw these guys. Um, they tore a guy limb from limb in front of me, hmm. and he was he was basically he was driving one of those big Coca Cola trucks. You know the ones the old fashioned ones. They used to have the buckles and this kind of a frame on the outside of the the truck. Huge, you know, Pantechnicum sixteen wheeler, and they crowded the truck like ants and they tore the driver, a black guy, they tore him out of the cab and they just tore him apart. Now, the thing was, they weren't doing it for Uhuru or Black Liberation or the ANC or anything. They were doing it because they fucking were getting them the Cokes on the back. So they all go then went and piled on the Cokes and they all were pleased as punch because they all got crates of Cokes and stuff. But that's how it is in most revolutions is the revolutionaries set up the spirit of resistance and they set up they set up the justification and the mindset they give them the people the story so that they can go and do it but people generally have pretty base motives so you've got to expect people to the vast majority of people who are going into something like wall street bets they're going in there thinking oh i'm going to get a maserati they're going to yolo and lose all their money and uh, yeah, it's a little IQ test for them, but it doesn't really matter. They they cannon fodder for anybody, right? If if you're a sheep, you're cannon fodder, and that's you can be cannon fodder for the revolutionaries, or you can be cannon fodder for the establishment. But either way, you're fucking cannon fodder, dudes. I'm sorry if if you are, you know, if you're that stupid and you basically I haven't questioned the system and you just gone through it, you're cannon fodder. So it's just you got to live up to your destiny as uh, pig fat, and so. Yeah, it's basically you're gonna get fried on the stock market, and uh, but if you if you don't do it, if you don't rebel, they're gonna get fried anyway. They're gonna they're gonna get fried by the system as soon as the the economy melts down. They're gonna be standing in bread line. So they're screwed one way or another. It's just it's better that they get there, getting a better result. And the better result is they bring down part of the system with their demise. It's it's kind of like you know if they're hurting people into the gas chambers at Auschwitz. It's better that basically they, you know, if they have to die, it's better die running at the machine guns or trying to storm the gates to get out of Auschwitz than it is going compliantly with the SS towards the gas chamber. So if, if you are a sheep and you are a caged chimp, your destiny is to die. And it's better to have somebody manipulate them to do a, a death that, um, you know, works against the system. So it's very, it's very harsh, but as usual, Gary, you surfaced the truth, and I think this truth should be said for anybody that's bothered to listen this far into the video. Um, I was just thinking uh, while you were saying that, that um, you know, the more you look at the trajectory that we're on, it seems to basically whatever outcomes that there are going to be, they 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 they're going to come about in in um, unintended. Like I mean, just we'll just take in the Wall Street bets people. They're not intending the result that they're going to get. They they, they think they're getting a, a as you just said, you know, their own personal thing. Perhaps not realizing the the, the greater consequences. And then you've got the um, opportunistic people in revolutions that you're just talking about, like in South Africa, where where the, the head, there's no idealism, but just don't give a fuck about any of that. But the whole thing is still being pushed ahead, um, without the the kind of by default, you know, that a certain a certain atmosphere has been set up, a certain little bit of a push has been given to it by people who might know what's what the aim is, but then it's taken yeah. over by others who actually don't know anything or care anything about the bigger picture, um, and so you get the you get. Um, uh, I, I mean, you know, does it come down to the fact that that's basically the way? Uh, that, that's basically the only way it's going to come off anyway, because it's the only way you're going to get sufficient numbers, momentum, interest. Activity, you know, you're just not going to get it by trying to organize around one idea. One, yeah, it's, um, it's ludicrous to it's ludicrous to assume 
that you're going to educate all these people, change them out of their conditioning. They're basically deprogramming them from the system they've been in their whole life, lives. Just explain to them their dream isn't going to happen. Do the psychology, the grief, and the therapy, and then say, "Okay, now you're ready for a revolution." It's just, it's just impossible. Where would you get the resources and time to even do such a thing? So, so, but you see, don't forget though that it's, 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 it might be wrong in detail. Can you still hear me? The rain is so damn hard. So, it, it might be wrong in detail. But it is still theater, and in some level, it's correct. So let me give you an example. If you take like QAnon, and then people say, "Oh, you know, this is QAnon is a conspiracy, and it's all..." Um, so I, I can't hear anybody. But can you hear me? So so yeah so yeah yeah QAnon and stuff, and then Q, everybody goes like, "Oh, well, QAnon's a conspiracy, and it's dangerous because these guys have rocks in their head." And the, you know, basically, the the elites are not Satan worshiping baby eaters and stuff. You say, well, yeah, I guess they're probably not Satan worshiping baby eaters, but they—that's the metaphor and the language you use for profoundly evil people. So, so you're a real dipshit if you think, well, we've got to debunk this and prove to people that they have a delusion and deprogram them, make them see that these are not really baby eating Satanists. You say, no, it's it's a metaphor. It's saying just just imagine a profoundly even person. You say, well, why are they profoundly evil? Well, let me explain to you how economics works. And I was like, where do you go from there? You're going to explain economics to your fucking dog? Basically, you can't explain astrophysics to a poodle. So you just give it in the language a poodle understands. And it's not a lie. These people are fucking psychopathic and evil. So it's really the people that are saying, well, you've got to be rational and you've got to explain to them that they're not baby eating sexes. No, no, you're the one with the problem. You're the fucking idiot. Because you don't see that it, in essence, it is that way. They're not literally baby eating Satanists, but they are profoundly even evil people, far more evil than you in your normie world and you're with your normality bias can guess. You do not understand how psychopathic they are, how evil they are. You think Obama's a nice guy and Boris Johnson is the salt of the earth and you'll vote for Biden because he's your nice old pops. It's like they're psychopaths, fucking dangerous, lethal, fucking psychopaths. But you don't realize that. So the, so the right-wing dipshits that you think have rocks in their head, they're actually smarter than you because they've got it. That in specifically, they've got it wrong, Satan eating baby, eh, maybe not. But in terms of how evil they are, equal. Yes, they are. They got that right, and you got it wrong. So it's the, the intellectuals that are doofuses. Right? So it's not wrong to, to come up with these, these stories. And anyway, I must say one more thing, and that's mm. In terms of uh, are there hidden actors, well, you fucking bet. This is a high, high stakes game. If you don't see that, like China and Russia and stuff is going to be in this, they are going to be. It's, it's a fucking war. I mean, I'm talking war, full scale with state actors. Huge amounts of money is going to flow. So basically, we're going to see the the interesting part of this. You can't say what the outcome is, but what you're going to see is how the forces are arrayed. Basically, you're going to see that there are a lot of people there that were faking it, and there are a lot of forces, uh, you know, under undercurrents that you never knew that were a lot stronger, and some of them could be state actors. So, yeah, I, you know, I wouldn't think that Wall Street bets was started by China, but if you think China and Russia and Iran and stuff is not going to be getting in on this this week, uh, and you know how many actors are standing in the wings just to profit from a big move in silver? This is a big deal. Big deal. If you have a look at, I, I'm expecting something like Soros. Uh, you know, Soros uh, made his fortune in, in about six hours, shorting the pound. And uh, Norman Lamont, you remember that day? Yeah, that day very well. <laughs> and I, I'm thinking that I'm really hoping <laughs> that, it, but that that fortune's going to move. Yeah, I so think. for the same reasons that the, the right movements are talking about Satan, uh, evil eating, baby eating people, the, supporting um, something like Wall Street Bet is is the same kind of thing. You kind of they don't get it all, but they've got something right. They're getting to the beast. Yeah, but they're, they're not, not, they're not, 
they're not using the same language, but they, yeah. they in fact, so it's worth supporting them. Yeah, it's, they're using to the limits of their imagination. So they know that Wall Street is rigged, but it's too complex for them to really understand how it works. But they can see basically that the hedge funds are evil and the hedge funds are raking it off. And basically, the, and so they, they're aiming at the hedge funds and thinking, we're, we're going to sort them out because they're evil. You know they're, they're the whole so thing is evil from head to toe, but they don't know that. So just, yeah. You know that the sub is getting into the hundred of millions people uh, visiting the sub at the moment as we speak. What, it's, hundreds of millions? Yeah. People are looking. There have been some statistics that have come out. It's gone completely worldwide. People are looking at it. They're not joined. I think they have six million people on the sub. But yeah, you're talking oh, about. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this so much. Yeah, I, you'd be better than me at checking those um, statistics. I just got it secondhand. No, from I, I, I've been hearing lots of rumors. I've, I've been hearing <laughs> physical physical silver is unobtainable yeah. today. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Okay. I hope you've got lots of silver coins. But basically, I don't want to do Cassandra, but I did fucking tell you people that to get gold. So I told everybody to get gold and silver coins. I got some silver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and just hold, All right. hold on. All right. your life. Realistically, though, um, you know, you're, you're, you're supposing that shit hits the fan in a big way, the economy goes down, everything goes down, um, and you're, you've are you survived somehow and you're in your, a little community, but you want to trade and you've got your bit of silver, uh, might be a coin, you, you, aren't you just going to be up against practical everyday problems? It's a person you're trying to trade it with is not going to be believe that it's real silver and he's not going to have any way to prove to verify that for himself because then i won't trade your silver or your gold if you've got some potatoes i'll trade them so you're going to get these uh, people no, 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 you don't think like that so so first of all uh it won't collapse in that way i don't expect it to collapse in that way so what, what what's most likely to happen is that it's an educational system and you're going to see some of the the internals of the system and see how how rigged it is. So, so what what's going to most likely happen is they're going to play foul, and and so what what's going to happen is circuit breakers are going to go most likely. Um, they're going to hold trading. They're going to intervene with like tons of um, uh, silver is going to come on the market from unknown sources, and basically you're going to see masses of manipulation. So what 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 I th what I would expect is at the end of the week it. The, the public is outraged by just how, how you know, they, they're going to be forced to make a foul move. They're going to have to do a foul play. So basically the public is going to be furious at the end because they're going to, they're going to want to give them a red card. Um, and so it, the, if you think it's not quite like 2008, right? 2008, everybody is bust. So we've we've had the bust. Now we just had papering over the cracks. <laughs> they never got back on their feet or anything. So so we're not going to see a bust. It's not 2008. It's not. They're not going to get the five banks round a table and say you must have an injection of cash. This is where everybody gets to see behind the curtain. The average man gets to see behind the curtain. So it's far more likely the ramifications of this is people, um, you know, pitchforks on the street and demonstrate much more. Uh, you know, riots like in in Amsterdam and Paris, because just people people are just just cannot hide that the game is thoroughly rigged. And so, really, what what people, the mainstream guys are going to realize now? There's a deep state and there's a big conspiracy, and they won't be able to deny it anymore. And I think that's more more likely the outcome. I'm not thinking you know, I'll be I'll be trading potatoes for for silver. So, so silver and stuff. If you have silver and gold coins, you the um, if you go back to Weimar Republic and stuff like that, uh, it doesn't go mad maxi. You know, it's basically people get people that don't have food are very docile, right? They, uh, you know, they they try to stop a bread right up to a certain limit, but after a while, it's it's actually in the state's favor to starve people. Because they get very docile. No, if if I if I if you haven't eaten for a week, I'm telling you, 
you don't feel very much like rioting on the street. So, what, you know, up to a point, they want to stop uh, anger and riots and everything if, in those kind of situations of deprivation. But if you push it uh, after a little while, they can get people off the streets by getting them. You get sick and you get miserable if, you, if you're starving. So, yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, if anything, you're going to be going down the pawnbroker, you're going to be handing in your yeah. gold to get fiat currency. Yeah. So, yeah. so you can go and buy some bread or whatever. It's, yeah. it's a very um, common trope to think that you would, and like what you were saying, Gary, that you would end up trying to trade gold or silver for a sheep or a cow. I mean, that's that's just, no. that's yeah. not going to happen that these days. I mean, it's we're beyond medieval times where you might have had your sack of gold or silver, but it's still a commodity. It's money, it's real money, but it's... Yeah, I mean, yeah, but you see, you it's, trade it's, with your equals, right? You trade with your equals, you don't trade it down. If you, if you had silver, you wouldn't take it out on a street corner to trade with some guy because no. you, you, you trade basically if everybody segregates in layers, so it becomes like South Africa. And if you've got loads of money, you, you know, you'll be in, in the set that has gold coins and stuff, you know what I mean? And you will trade. You basically isolate yourself and hide because you don't want people to know that you've got resources. But every, everybody has little hidey holes and little class divisions and little places where they hang out. So, you know, basically, okay, take me for an example then. But I'm, in, I'm in a place where, where everybody's got loads of options, loads of resources, loads of shit. And then basically you just... You know, you have tokens to play with in that environment. You don't, you don't get Mad Maxi and go and trade uh, silver for potatoes. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Hollywood has done such a lot of evil. They've done decades and decades of filling our heads in with cement, and the yeah, it's it's just. There's so many Hollywood tropes that are, will serve us ill because people just don't understand how, how these things work, how collapses work and stuff. You know. Yeah, I mean, you get this kind of mag magical thinking about the way, the way you can operate. Um, yeah, Mad Max has done so much evil. That that one yeah. movie has done such a disservice yeah. to the world because it's, uh, yeah. it's I an that impossible narrative. That guy who's done it, that actor, and it, it, the background is really, really religious in a way. I mean, it's just like, look what, what's going to happen. This is men is bad. People can't cooperate. It's just, it's a horrible example. You're absolutely right. It's been absolutely. It comes out of some, like you said. Yeah, but I mean, the, the trouble is, though. Millenarianism, yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm just thinking, though. But, um, that, that's kind of predisposing people to act that out and actually make it become the 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 way they will behave. They will behave no, that way because really. they think. Not really. No, they don't do that. No, it's, mm. it's it's just false human psychology. It's just a twelve-year-old's view of human psychology. Whoever made that movie's a dick. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to, yeah, if you want to know about collapses, read Rebecca Solnit and and stuff like that. It's like complete opposite. It's actually, it's actually quite good. It's actually quite a fun time to be in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you you have started about it. Hard, but hard. It would easily be the best time of your life. You know, easily be the best time. Of your life. Who was the author? Re Rebecca Solnit. Paradise Made in Hell was was a book she wrote about about how people really behave in these situations, and and basically the lesson the lesson from her is very loud and clear: is get rid of the state, get rid of the state, get rid of the police, defund the police, get rid of the army, get rid of those bastards. They are your problem. They are your biggest problem. It's not Mad Max that's the problem. It's the security forces. It's the guys that are kind of keep order and control. Those guys are the enemy. Those guys will call you the pain, the grief. Those guys will cause the cholera. Those guys will redistribute the wealth. Those guys will cause the shootings. It's those guys, those 
fucking a cabs get them get them every single one of them remove them they are your biggest problem those guys don't have any mercy on those cunts because those cunts are if you, if you want to know what those cunts are going to do you got to go out and see a flak tower in berlin what the the ss guys trying to keep order and knowing that they were doomed they they basically pushed 40,000 people into a single flag town, civilians, women and children. And in essence, what they were saying was, we're going to die, so you're fucking going to die too. You don't get off this lightly. We, we fucking fought on the Eastern Front, and we're pissed, and so we don't care. You women and children, you suffer our fate. You don't get off. That's what the that's what the SS were doing. So they put they put forty thousand people into these flak towers. Those flak towers were hammered by Russian tanks for days, and they they had to they had concrete splintering off the walls at them. And if anybody tried to escape, the SS shot them. Now the SS were their protectors. Don't forget it. Those little boys in blue and the nice little Bobby in the street. He's the fucking SS guy that's hurting you into that flak tower. Don't forget it. Those are, those are the guys that you, you really got to worry about. Eliminate them. Eliminate them. Yeah. yeah, I kind of worry about that in countries uh, like here where it's um, where the only people with guns are the police and the military. Like yeah, you go, go, and have a look at go, go have a look at Sarajevo. Go and have a look at those militias. Go and have mm. a look at the guys that wound up in The Hague for war crimes. Yeah. They are yeah. the military. They're the police. Those are the guys that have the mentality to do that. They mainly male, they're heavily armed, and they have a mindset that's fucking toxic. Those guys, basically, the, the, as soon as you can eliminate those guys, you've, you've eliminated at least 50% of your problem. But if you, if you see those guys rounding up people, trying to keep control, those guys do the mass killing. Those are, those are the, the really, the guys, those are the guys that hold people with guns and, call, you know, the, the brutal things where they're getting fathers to call their sons out of the forest and then they're going to mow them both down and that's what happened but those are the military those are the guys that everybody all the liberals vote for saying we need more police we need more protection as you don't know what you're doing those, those guys are going to be your biggest problem coming up and collapse mm. Everybody, basically, we're in a protection racket, and those those guys are on the wrong side of our protection. They're not there to protect us. They says every black and white in America is on the on the door to protect and serve. It's basically to protect property rights and to serve the rich. That's all they're there for. They're security guards for the rich. They, they are not your friends, not your friends. But unfortunately, women are scared of getting raped, and they think they always like, it's the statistics don't, don't bear it up. The, the police don't protect women, and they certainly don't protect them from rape. So just, you've got to educate people on that score, that the police are not your friends. But think how far we have to go. We've got to go from the XR going, Please, we love you. <laughs> this I like it all. <laughs> you have to go from there all the way to here to know that these guys. And are it's, long, it's a long, long way. It feels, uh, it feels bad because everybody's being very far even more now, um, particularly in, with all the lockdowns. It's, uh, it's worrying because the police are becoming more and more militarized. Um, well, well, it's better. You see, you see, there's a problem in the UK, and that's that you've done community policing, and all the bobbies are so nice. And if you want another time, ask a policeman, and you've you've got a very nice, nice view of the cops. So the more militarized and the bigger the gulf becomes between them and the public, the 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 closer they'll get to be more like the IRA and start to see them as the enemy. And that's that's a good place to get to. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, I think that I think there's more people that are aware that the police. It, I think there is still that romantic view. You're right, um, but I think there's more and more people, especially now, it's been more exposed with the way that we're just losing our the rights that were built up over you know years that the police were supposed to originally protect us, but as you say, they don't anymore. I think more people are more aware that they just. I mean, they don't patrol. They just run around in cars. Um, you know. Uh, uh, answering crime, but it, it's that they, they see the public more as a threat. You can see it in the way they act. They don't, um, 
and that's worrying. So I think the, the yeah, they're not what they were, and I think more and more people are realizing that. But it's still a tiny proportion. Maybe that. Yeah, so there's a difference. So those are beat cops. So so what happens is you know with Maggie Thatcher, then with the miners, right? So the miners didn't have yeah. any romantic view about the police because they had to face guys who had all the. In, they weren't policemen, they were just thugs. A lot of the guys were on remand, taken out of prisons. They were basically doing what the SS did and basically get hardened criminals and use them to control the people. And and uh, Maggie Thatcher got um, rent, rent cops for the day with basically hoods. They had no insignia. They just stuffed them into a uniform that didn't fit them, and they just took billy clubs on, on the miners. So, so we will get to that stage, and then the public will they hear the they romantic did. views of the police. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They, they. I mean, that was a long time ago. You're, you're right. I, 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 I didn't know that, but um, it doesn't surprise me. But um, that it happened more recently with um, the protests, the lockdown protests back in the autumn um, when they were going up to London. And a lot of people said, former policemen on forums, on, on alternative media channels, on YouTube said they were not, those guys were not um, from you police. They, it's like they were shipped in guys that were dressed up. Um, uh, a lot of former policemen were saying they did not uh, react the way our police, they, 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 were there to provoke to get a reaction from men so they deliberately attacked women and then they got a reaction from the men in the crowd and and a lot there was footage of people in the crowd saying no look what they're doing and there was for luckily there was former special forces and former military people who were civilians in the crowd who realized what was going on and said no sit down don't react and try to so yeah it, yeah i fully believe that they yeah deliberately try to provoke reaction. Yeah, yeah no, I, I remember that, that in what you're talking about, actually, I did read about it. But the, um, yeah, the tactics have to evolve. And the, one of the reasons why they have to get off the streets is because they're not savvy enough uh, to, they say, in South Africa, it took a long time and a lot of bloodshed uh, to get savvy. So you can take command of the streets. But only when you're much more sophisticated. The, this, the real reason to get off the streets is that the, the, the establishment owns them. They have uh, all the weaponry. They have, a, uh, you know, in store, they have tremendous arsenals of weapons that I've seen that go from microwave, uh, basically microwave rays and stuff and sound. And there's all sorts of non-lethal weapons, a whole array of them that are still, they, they haven't brought out, they will bring out at some stage. But... Basically, what I'm saying is the tactics, their training, and their equipment is vastly outnumbers the average dickhead that gets on the street. So, so you're just basically outmatched on the street. So that's the real reason to get off is is they own the streets, and the, and then with surveillance and backtracking, it's just you, it's just you have to cede that ground to them. Um, and and the the good thing is is they've invested so much in crowd control and street um, and that kind of unrest is that they completely neglected all the, you know, where the real battle is going to be fought, like online and with the gaming community. This battle is going to be fought from people's couches. Mm. So you, you doubly don't want to get down on the street because of that. But, yeah, they, you, you, those guys that they employ, they're, they're guys overseas, they're ex-military, they're, they're uh, all these professional soldiers and mercenaries. And all those guys at some stage get brought into the fold, and those guys, they're brutal. If you, yeah. if you see like an FBI interrogation video now, they'll tell you how you've got to be nice and put everybody at their ease. And it's like, yeah, that's the stage of it. But uh, when if you, you know, paramilitary is involved and you get taken by a mercenary, those guys will chop your legs off to get information. <laughs> You'll be lucky to escape with your balls from those guys. That's no longer, you know, waterboarding and shit like that, you know. So, yeah. Anyway, that, that's the reason to get off the street is you, you're outmatched. Yeah. And and stuff like Roger Hallam and we all oh you know get arrested and fill up the jails and it's like dudes Gandhi was buried in India fucking 60, 70 years ago. That era is gone. <laughs> you you're talking about ancient history, you you're talking about bows and arrows and Arthur and shit that just doesn't apply anymore. You know, this is another era. Just forget it, dudes. Forget it. 
and that maybe end on that one. <laughs> I suppose we better end that. Right, uh, it's enough misery for one night. Yeah, yeah. well, it's ten minutes, but but yeah. I am. Well, hopefully yeah. the, the week is. Uh, it's a good week. It's an exciting week. Hopefully, mm. we'll, we'll get to see. I'm hoping we get to see under the covers, and everybody gets to see under the covers this week. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks, you. Bye, Thank bye you. everyone. Yeah. Bye. Take okay. care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.